strategies to help you become more productive, profitable, create progress, and lead a ridiculously fulfilling life. Welcome to the Susan Sly Project with your host, the woman who wants you to succeed, Susan Sly. So I have a question for you. I want you to imagine that you are a Emmy award-winning actor. You're the person that, you know, people kind of like line up. They want to touch you. They follow you into restrooms and do all that stuff. And you say, you know what, this is something I absolutely love. And on top of it, I want more for myself and my family. So you decide that in addition to acting, you're going to be an entrepreneur. You're going to be at every one of your son's football games. You're going to do it all. And you're also, even in your 50s, going to expand your mind and really embrace the new tech era. And my guest today, that's exactly what he's done. You are going to leave inspired. You're going to leave focused. This is one of the most disciplined, hardworking people I know. He's also a very dear friend. He's like a brother. You're going to love it. So before I bring him out, just a few announcements. Number one, my event, Sales Nirvana, is coming up. My guest is actually the guest at that event. And this event is for you if you have any kind of business where you must have sales, which is basically every business. So I am a certified NLP coach, and I'm so excited about this event. So at this event, I'm going to be teaching you the same kind of persuasion techniques that people like Tony Robbins use from stage. So in addition to understanding how when a person's eyes are looking a certain way, what they need, how to deal with different personality styles, even where to put a screen in a room so you actually sell more, we're going to do all of that. It's going to be an incredible day here in Phoenix, Arizona. And at the time of recording the show, I believe we only have something like, I don't know, maybe 31 tickets left. So it is sales nirvana.com. It's going to be incredible. And I'm so excited. I also just got back from New Jersey and I've been talking about the Empowered Women Unite event with Lisa DeMeo, Kathy Savage, Angela Mareska. And that day was, was beyond. I mean, it was so incredible. And I'm still honestly vibrating about it. And it's, it, it, you know, we don't know what the future holds if we're doing another one or what have you, but I would just say, check out the Accelerate Coaching fan page on Facebook for more announcements, but it was, it was mind blowing. And so with that, I also want to let you know that every Monday I do Bulletproof Mondays on my Facebook fan page and it's Susan Sly live. And on those days, I'm teaching you strategies on mindset and tactics. And here's the thing. For a long time, I only really focused a lot on on mindset. And then I realized people wanted more than just to be inspired. They also wanted the tactics in business. So we, you know, I talk about everything from how to organize your life to how to be structured as an entrepreneur to how to be um, organized and focused and productive and all of it. So do check it out. And uh, you can check out any of the previous episodes, but it, I love doing it. It's Mondays at two o'clock Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. So do check that out. So wherever you are in the world, I love you. I acknowledge you for being here. And my special guest is, as I mentioned, an Emmy Award winning actor. And he won his Emmy Award for his contribution on the hit series, The Bay. And he actually is has reignited that role. Um, we'll talk about that. You might have seen him on Soldiers of Fortune. I remember seeing him on Soldiers of Fortune. But who can forget him as Taggart on General Hospital? So, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's so funny. We do, we do call him Taggart from time to time. But one of the biggest things about him is he is also a successful entrepreneur. He is a very, very focused, um, workout fanatic. Uh, oftentimes he will text me. It'll be five in the morning. He's on his way to a spinning class. And, you know, he's, he's also had been in videos with the likes of Billy Blanks. Remember Ty Bo? He was in those videos as well. He, one of the things he's most proud of are his beautiful children, Marcus, Nathan, and Danica. He's also married to his great love, Michelle, who I adore. She is just such a brilliant woman. And so with that, I want to welcome the one and only Rael Andrews. And Rael, thank you for being here. 
Oh, wow, man. <laughs> thank you for having me, Susan. It is an awesome. It's a pleasure. And, you know, thanks for those amazing things you said. Um, it really makes my day and makes me feel great. So, but I'm just excited to be here because I, I just keeping it real. Um, you know, this, uh, I, I have to share something with you because this is, it's all about, you know, vision and goals and making things happen. And um, I haven't told you this yet, but I, when I first heard about you, um, about maybe three years ago, four years ago, um, and I was at an Eric Worre event. And um, Eric Worre had said at that time, he had said, reach out to people that you would like to, you know, be part of or be part of their life. And he said, maybe think of something, come up with an idea where maybe you want to interview them. And, you know, reach out to you. And I actually, you were, I made a list at the time. You were fresh on my mind because I'd heard about you and I'd done some research on you and your amazing journey and everything. And I actually reached out to you. Um, you probably don't even remember this on Facebook. And I said, hi, my name is Rael Andrews and I would like to interview you. And I, I had this, uh, I made up this uh, show called uh, uh, Modern Day Heroes or, or something like that. And you never responded, but what the power of it is, I believe that I put, look where we are now, and I totally forgot about it. And when we were brought together, when I finally joined, you know, Agency Aid and started taking your courses, being a coach, I went into Facebook, and I think I was going to friend you or message you or something, and that message I had sent you was still there, and I totally had forgotten that I had basically, as you believe, I started the process and look where we are now. I'm not interviewing you, but you're interviewing me, but pretty cool. That's a great story. And it really is about the power of intention and and to that person listening. And you know who you are. We're in over 91 countries. So that person listening right now who maybe has set a goal for themselves. How powerful is that to set an intention? And you don't have to know how it's going to happen. It's just being intentional. Let me ask you, when did you know you wanted to be an actor? You know, um, I actually, it's funny because I had no desire whatsoever to be an actor. I was, I was the jock, um, you know, and I actually, at the time, I remember you know, my dream was to make the 84 Olympics as a sprinter. Um, I was blessed with speed. I ran barefoot till I was in grade seven and still hold records that I, 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 I set barefoot. And I actually have my track shoes here. I'm going to bring them to Nirvana and show people because in my very first pair of track shoes, they still have grass on them. They got the big spikes on them. But what happened is, you know, I was um, dating the girl who was the drama queen in the school. And I remember I used to go to her plays because she was my girlfriend. I said, oh, my gosh, this is so stupid. You know, and, <laughs> and then when I was about 16, how it all started was my aunt had one of those, you you know what I for lack of better words the ones that we all know now are like kind of your scammy acting schools but you know and she had was having this thing with one of the the biggest casting directors which is Aaron Spellings you probably know him from mm -hmm. Dynasty and all that and he she said will you come to this acting seminar and I'm, like, I'm not coming to no stupid acting seminar and she goes there's going to be a whole bunch of girls there and I was like oh okay so I'll go so I, I went to meet girls uh, long story short I did a scene from Ordinary People and uh, Aaron Spelling said, you got a gift, you got a talent. And that's when it was the first kind of spark was there. But then what happened was, you know, they started Hollywood West. I grew up in Vancouver, Canada. Hollywood West was growing. And they were starting to do a lot of movies in Vancouver. They came in town. They were doing a movie called Harry Tracy, Last Desperado with Bruce Dern. And they needed a young black kid. Or actually, they actually called it black boy which was funny back then it was not that long ago 1981 and so they did there where i grew up there wasn't a lot of us and they went around to all the schools they found three of us brought us into audition um i read the scene and i got the part and mm -hmm. that was the beginning and then the guy then uh said you know being athletic he said have you ever thought about being doing stunts i said no he said there was no work for african-americans or there was no african-american stuntman at the time and so 
that started. I, I played every bad guy you could imagine, you know, being black and being able to do stunts. I got blowed up. I got stabbed. I got killed. I overdosed, throw off buildings, you name it. And um, then eventually I got a big role. And um, that really sparked the seed. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take this serious and make a living of it. And that's when I moved to Hollywood and jumped into acting classes and got serious. Mm. Wow. That's a great story. And having someone like Aaron Spelling say, you have a gift. I mean, that's, that's no joke, right? <laughs> Thinking about that. And, and what a difference one person can make in someone's life. And, and to think we, that our words have such power and to have someone like Mr. Spelling say, Rial, you have a gift. What from that, that one, the first question that kind of strikes me is that from that one episode from, from Aaron Spelling saying you have a gift. Can you speak about how that opened up an awareness for you that wasn't previously there? Well, yeah, it, it totally did because it, it made me think of myself in a way I wasn't seeing myself. And, you know, um, having somebody like that speak that over you. That's why to this day, one of the, you know, my saying is I'll believe in you till you believe in yourself or, you know, I, I mm. believe, and I know we both do, you can speak life and death with the power of words. I, he, he spoke life over me that day mm. and it, it changed, it changed my life forever. And he also, even before that, the other casting director go back to the, uh, he said something, Susan, and I've seen it and I know it to be true in my life. And it started back then at, to, to make it real quick. He basically at the end of the weekend, he said, I'm going to give you guys. There was a room of over a thousand actors in there, people who wanted to be actors. OK, I didn't want to be an actor. I just wanted to meet girls. But these were people that were spending a lot of money saying they want to be an actor. And he said, I'm going to tell you. The one secret that's going to make a huge difference in your career, and this has made a difference in my life for the past, you know, since I was 16, I never forgot this. And he said, he said, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. He said, and he said, everybody write this down. And they're like, okay, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then so he said, I want you to wait seven days after today. And after seven days, I want you to write me a thank you note. And when you write me that thank you note, what you do and you wait seven days because it's like a second appointment. But then when you write me that thank you note, because I don't have to take the time to see it. But what I'm going to do, I'm telling you this right now. When I get that thank you note in my office, I'm not going to remember you. But I'm going to have my secretary pull up your headshot. So it will be like a second remembrance of me for you. And then I'm going to take your thank you note and I'm going to staple it to the back of that picture. And I'm going to put you in a special file. And he said, as sure as I'm telling you this, I promise you, I'll be surprised if five of you in this room do this. Fast forward 18 years later, I'm a very successful actor in Hollywood. I call up my agent and I say, hey, listen, I want to go down and thank him for, for making an appointment with him. He goes, he doesn't see anybody. I'm not going to he's not I'm not going to call him. I said, call him, set up an appointment. I want to thank him in person for changing my life. He long he makes a call. He says, oh, my gosh, you don't believe it. He said he wants to see you tomorrow at 1130. Now I'm nervous, right? Cause I'm, and you go, you walk in this big office. It's got a big like you can picture you open the door and his desk is like two miles across the room. He's got a big oak desk with this big chair. And it's like this slow walk across the room. And and as I'm getting closer to his his desk, I can see my original headshot. I don't have hair at this point. I can see my original headshot where I got an afro. And I'm in my head, I'm thinking, I'm going to kill my agent. I'm like, I cannot believe they sent that picture. And as I get, he says, hey, do you see us? I, I start to apologize. And he goes, no, no, turn it over. And I turn it over. And there's my thank you note that I sent him. And he mm -hmm. said, you realize out of those thousand people in that room, you were the only one who sent me a thank you. Wow. Look where you are. Mm. That's an incredible story. And as you're saying that, that, that sparks this whole dialogue, and we're going to jump into this in a minute. I remember Jim Rohn, the last time he spoke live, and, and I was sharing the stage with him in Dallas. And Jim, if you don't know who Jim Rohn is, depending where you are in the world, you might not, but he was the mentor to Tony Robbins, and Tony used to work for Jim. And he was an amazing business philosopher, and he said, only... 
10% of you will read the books I tell you to read. Only 10% of you will do the things I'm telling you to do. And that's why only 10% of you are likely to become millionaires. Now, when he was speaking this, that was a lot of money. Not that it's still not a lot of money. It was just, it, it was that economic period where it was like that meant more and, you know, now due to the economy and, you know, whatever, so on and so forth. It'd be like someone saying making 10 million in today's dollars. And, and I swore in that moment that I would be a 10 percenter. And so if someone was achieving at the level I wanted to achieve at, provided they were doing it ethically and morally, if they said, read this book, or they said, you know, do this, then I would do it. And so from that day forward, I made that commitment. And and it's interesting, Rel, because you know I talk a lot about how only 8% of people will achieve their New Year's resolutions and 92% never achieve the goals they set out for themselves. And and that's the kind of thing, you know, and that's why you are where you're at is because you are bold enough to take on the challenge. And as a, you know, here you are today, you are back on the bay. Um, <laughs> I know you can't disclose any plot um, secrets, but you've had, um, because we're so close, you've had some amazing things happen with your acting career. And I know faith for you and for me is a massive part of it. When you started this year, what were some of the intentions you said, especially when it comes to acting, that you have managed to live into. And the reason I'm asking this question for anyone listening is that, you know, the theme of, of today's episode is really around this whole concept about staying in faith, being intentional and, and not giving up. And so I want people to hear because some of the things that have happened to real this year are so cool and I know them, but I want him to share them. So what, you know, go back to January. I know you were setting goals. What are some of the things that have come true for you this year with regard to your acting career? Yes. Um, and you know, it, you know, since you opened the door, I'm going to go there because it's really, you know, about being bold with your faith. And, you know, I, as an actor, act, just to set the stage a little bit, whenever they have a role that they put out there, it's such a competitive world now. There's something, there's actually statistics. It's about, you know, 3,800 submissions will be submitted for one role. Out of those 3,800 submissions, there might be 20 that actually get to go in and audition for that role, which they will break down to, you know, a producer, what they call a producer callback on most scenarios where there's like five. So it's a pretty, you know, and I truly really don't have representation per se and i made a decision to put my faith and it goes way way back when i was struggling in hollywood i'd become a very successful actor in hollywood and i made some very bad choices and i was basically lying horizontal um out of my mind drugged out of my mind and i was met this guy in a bar and i truly believe it was an angel and I kept offering him a drink all night and he was, no, I'm good. I'm good. And it was all dark and he was white. And, and, and then he says to me, he says, I was complaining all night. I was just being a victim. Oh, my agent sucks. My manager sucks. Nobody gets me. Nobody understands me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says to me, he says, well, have you ever thought of asking God to be your manager? And I looked at him and I'm like, yeah, okay, buddy, I'll do that right away, buddy. You know, (laughs) like, and he was like, oh, seriously, here's what you should do. Write out a contract, put it under your blotter and say, from this day on, I ask God to be my agent and manager and, 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 and manage my career, manage my life. Well, it, you know, I didn't run home and do that, but that seed was planted. And about several years later, I did do that. And I share that with you because now, as you say, when we started this year, Um, Like I said, I don't really have a physical manager agent on this earth. Mm -hmm. So when my phone rings and they say, hey, we've been looking for you. Would you like to come play this role on Days of Our Lives? Or, hey, we're getting ready to bring back the Bay. Would you like to do this? Or, hey, we've got this movie. We want to offer you the part. (laughs) Wow. Wow. 
and I don't really have an agent, but I do have an agent. I have the best agent, the number one agent, the number one manager in the world. And yes, through faith, you know, I've had some amazing things happen and just, you know, believing it and speaking in it and walking in it and having that confidence, I truly believe. I mean, there's no other answer to explanation to that, right, Susan? I mean, it, it just that is insane. When you, if you tell an actor that, and you, they'll first say, well, who's your agent? Because they're going to want to work. And I say, well, my agent is Jesus. And they go, okay, sure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know, it's for real. You know, it works. And mm-hmm. it's believing in that faith, right? Just like, you know, you mentioned, and I, I wanted to just hit on that quick because it's huge. I remember when I first wanted to be an actor and I made that decision, people laughed at me. And they said, oh, you're African-American. There's no work for African-Americans. Less than 3% make a living in SAG. I said, well, I'm going to be that 3%. And you and me, you talk about that all the time, 97, 3%, 8%. Mm-hmm. Just like when I met you. I'm just keeping it real. Mm-hmm. You know, I was all in, man. I saw this woman walk up. I saw you. And I said, you know, I, I don't question it. It makes my wife crazy. She, as much as she loves you, but she's not that person. But I'm all in. And if Susan tells me to go hug a tree, I go hug a tree. She goes, but don't you want to know why? No, I don't need to know why. Susan told me to. And Susan has four businesses and makes over $20 million, So if she wants me to hug the tree, even if ants are crawling on my leg and I hate ants, I'm going to hug the tree. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you to hug a tree, but uh, (laughs) yeah, I mean, it's my philosophy that we all have to be coachable to someone, Yeah, right? And that's the thing. And so many people are, are, are coachable to the wrong people. And that's the, that's the big piece. The, what would people be surprised at when it comes to acting? Because I think a lot of people glorify it and, you know, they look at like, you know, a, a, Brad Pitt or they look at, you know, a Leonardo DiCaprio or a, a, a Kate Blanchett or someone and, and, and they're, they're just thinking this, like, it's so, you know, everything is so fabulous. What would people be surprised to know? You know, they'd be surprised to know that it's not as glorious as they think it is. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, if you want to, you know, excel, but it's a lot of, because to be an actor, you know, and it's one of the things we work on in the video class that we do at agency aid and stuff like that is I use a drill that is a drill that a lot of actors, I heard you talking about it last week on the course with sense memory with your NLP. And it's one of the things we do as an actor and we go, and really go back to being less than five years old. That's why when you see a lot of these people um, and you say, oh man, they're crazy or they're weird or whatever. No, they've just taken all the walls down and they're just being real. And when you be real and honor, um, honest and vulnerable like that, you are open to a lot of attacks. And, you know, when you put your work out there and, you know, I would remember back in the days of General Hospital, I could get, 2,000 fan emails, letters. We got letters back then um, telling you how awesome you are, how amazing you are. And then you get one. You suck, dude. You're the worst actor ever. I don't even know what you're doing. And that just destroys you. Mm. It just destroys you. It's um, – yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Like, And it's – I've had that happen – as a speaker, I've had, you know, you have all these people like, wow, that was amazing. And, you, you know, you work so hard and you put your heart into it. And, you know, I'm praying over it. You're praying over it. And then to have someone and, um, you know, it's tough. It's tough at times. And having that that thick skin is essential. It It is because there are people are always going to have an opinion. But here's the thing I would say, name name 10 famous actors name 10 famous movie critics. You probably name two or three, like Siskel and Ebert, right? But it's the people don't remember the critics. They remember the people who dare to achieve. And that's the thing. And I think I have other friends who are actors. There's a lot of waiting around. That's another thing I think people do, you know? (laughs) Oh my gosh. The waiting is like, especially on a movie, it's like, you know, you shoot an eighth of a page a day. It's like, oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay, Taggart, 
you also just had a like general hospital reunion. You were doing like the, you know, photo call with people. And, and as an aside, real, um, other actors will charge for their photos. And it was so funny because the day before he was going, uh, you know, he was like, which photo should I give away? He gives away his photos. What's been the weirdest fan encounter you've had? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, well, uh, you know, a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, when I went to a uh, fan event, an autograph signing with uh, Sonny and Jason, and I-, I won't say what part of the country we're in, but I won't say. But that was crazy. They, they were like jumping on the car. They were like ha- one girl was halfway in the front window trying to get, you know, get in there, and they, they can get a little, a little crazy. I had oh, I oh. I had one girl one day, I heard some noise outside my apartment when I was living in, in Studio City. And I, I look at this, kept hearing this scratching thing going on. And I uh, look out the window, she's sitting in a tree. She's climbed up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> outside the tree and she had like these big like i remember it was weird she had like big bug eyes it was like a koala bear or something but it was a human sitting in a tree and and uh that was probably be the weirdest thing and the the coolest thing actually was i did an article once uh for soaps and depths and they asked me what my favorite candy or something was and i said hot tamale candies <laughs> oh my gosh susan <laughs> Next week, I came to my dressing room, and there there was so many hot tamale candies in my dressing room. All the fans were sending me hot tamale. I said I should have said diamonds. Yeah, diamonds and gold. <laughs> 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 the, I I love I don't eat candy, but the odd time it'd be those Halloween, you know, cinnamon hearts or hot tamales, Ooh. like that whole cinnamon thing. I totally get that. Yeah, yeah. the uh, it's it, I was on um I was on the set of Bold and Beautiful ones, and mm-hmm. a friend of mine, Paul Gannis, who you know, he yeah, was yeah. he was guesting on on b and b and when i was growing up i love young and the restless so it was my birthday and paul's like i can get you on the side of young and the restless so i go to studio city and young and the restless they're all shooting off site it was so random but um i was on the set of bold and the beautiful and i met you know ridge it's thor you'd have to know if you ever seen that so but anyway but one of the things that was like interesting to me is the sets because it looks like they're in this big mansion and it's like this small room it's like eight by eight by eight but it 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 was just phenomenal and everyone is absolutely incredible um and so gracious with their time and absolutely amazing but it's you know again i think that people romanticize it but you know there's a lot of waiting there's a lot of different energies you're dealing with there's a you know like all sorts of things oh yeah yeah we send i can tell i won't say names but i could tell you i'll tell you a couple we were just talking about this on the bay the other day uh there's one actor i work with all his scenes had to be shot by two o'clock in the afternoon because he was totally unworkable. Uh, there was another actor, famous actor I worked with on the call sheets. It, they actually had, he had to have a Jack bottle of Jack Daniels on set. One day we were working um, down a cliff. They forgot to have, bring his bottle down there and it, it got ugly, dude. I mean, it was crazy. I work with another actor who, <laughs> um, oh man, I could go on. With, I, I'll, I'll tell you one funny story. Now, this is my this was my first movie I ever worked on. Coffee, I guess, is very important on the coffee set, on the on the TV set, on the movie set. So we were working on this, the Harry Tracy Last Inspirato. We had to take a train ride three miles into a mountain. To the set, and they had loaded up this train. Everybody got on it, and the craft service person forgot the coffee. I had no idea coffee was so important. I never seen so many people lose their mind. <laughs> I mean, they they literally made the train go backwards to get the coffee. They could they were not working without the coffee. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> The I, yeah, I've had my moments, but not I've not been a diva about it. I will I will go and procure. I was recently in Toronto, 
And I wake up early and it's so funny. My husband's always like jet like this jet. Like I'm like, I don't believe I have jet like, so therefore I don't have it. Right. And, and so it was early in the morning I'm trying to find like a Starbucks and, um, I literally paid a cab driver. It was still dark out to take me to a Starbucks. He waited. I went in, I got the coffee. It was like, a, you know, it ended up being like $25 coffee. Because I get it. I get it. Let's, you mentioned video and I want to dive in there for a moment because video has there's so many things happening with video from um, IGTV and a lot of people who follow the show they're either you know they follow technology we've had amazing guests on who are just you know crushing it in different areas but the video whether someone's a realtor or someone's a chiropractor or someone's in direct sales or whatever they're in video has become so important and yet there are a lot of people who are intimidated because of video. So what advice would you give to first the person who's intimidated? And then secondly, what advice would you give to someone who just wants to improve their videos? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, people fear uh, public speaking and video more than death a lot of them. That's a true statistic. You know, um, my, my advice to them would be, um, you know, just jump in. They got to, they got to get, if you're serious about taking your business to the next level, you're going to have to get over it. Um, you know, um, what I will tell you is that, you know, what they do love is they love real, vulnerable, authentic. So, you know, the cool thing is they're not looking for it to be excellent. Um, the advice that I'd have for anybody that's, that's doing it is obviously, you know, would to get with us. We do a, a ninja video course and um, I got a beginner's course and then an advanced course where we dig deep into it but the reality is like you said Susan if you're doing any kind of business real, real, uh, real estate you know entrepreneurs small business it's your way to get out there and, and bring yourself to your avatar so they can feel your heart and soul so you need to know how to do that there are techniques that you can do that make it look better and as you say as more and more people are catching on to it now it's getting more and more competitive per se and there's things that you can do and just like you know um i you know i'll give you one nugget today for any of you out there doing videos it's, it's a big one stuff that i take for granted but is you know your eye line with your camera. Most of, I see it all day long and I see it by huge big time entrepreneurs, but you know, they hold the camera below them. And you know, Susan, especially as a woman, nobody likes to be dominated. They do not like to be talked down to. And that's essentially what you're doing. When you have your camera below your eye line and you're looking down at your iPhone or down at your computer or whatever you're doing, you are talking down to people. And you can imagine, does anybody want to be talked down to? No. Mm. You want to bring it up to your eye level, like you're talking, eye level to person. That will make right there is a, is a game changer. And make sure you clean your lens. Okay? Like there's nothing worse than the, like Susan, I mean, do you hate this? Is there nothing worse than the, <laughs> like the blurred effect? Like what are, were you going for that effect? You just haven't cleaned your phone in like a week or what? <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy you said that about the eye line because I see, you know, I, Gary Vee did this video the other day and it was directed at people 50 plus and he's like, get over it, embrace technology. If you intend to be working another 15 years, you know, get like stop complaining and start doing. And I see a lot of people when they have their readers on and you're in your 50s, you don't look it, but you are. And when they have their readers on and they're doing, you know, whether it's a Zoom or they're doing a video of some sort and they're not only are they looking down, they have the readers on and and just little things like even doing a Zoom, lifting your computer up, put a whole bunch of books on it mm -hmm. as an exam underneath it. Or um, I love that you said that. And when... Rial comes to Phoenix for Sales Nirvana. I'm teaching neuro linguistic programming. I, as I mentioned, I'm a certified NLP coach. I'm a, a trauma relief specialist with NLP. Um, I have been coaching people to human potential for decades, and I also was, you know, an athlete and everything else. So I myself have coached myself to 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 massive amounts of potential. But we're going to do the NLP portion in the morning. And then Riala is going to come back after lunch to teach video strategies. And I know you've been working on, on 
you want to contribute so much, right? So what is the, what are, if you could sort of say in three things that people are going to take away when they come, what would they be? Yes. Well, they're going to learn the, the, the 10 do's and don'ts that are huge. They're going to learn, I'm going to incorporate your morning. They're going to, you know, learning from you the word. So now we're going to be able to bring it to life, you know, through video. So you can use the brilliance that Susan taught you. And I'm going to believe that you're going to walk out of there. Um, the one thing I've been trying to think how I can bring you the most value in the time that I have. The number one thing we do right now is Facebook lives. So I'm going to leave you with the gifts to be able to bring a not dead Facebook live with the NLP words intertwined in and be able to walk out of there and right there that day, do a Facebook live uh, to your avatar and be taking your business to the next level. I love it. And we have so many realtors coming. A friend of mine is coming who he's doing a tech startup. He's bringing his chief marketing officer and they think this tech startup is going to go from zero to a billion in three years. And uh, it's all artificial intelligence. And I was just with him last week at a tech event. And I said, so, you know, so what is it you're hoping to get? And he's like, listen, NLP, sales skills, crushing it, like, yes, yes, and yes. And so um, it's going to be, an, I am so excited. There's going to be just an incredible, incredible group of people. Okay. In a moment, we're going to play truth or truth, and you're going to get to ask me anything, anything at all. And I, the fans love this. This is like, they're like, we love truth or truth. And, um, you know, that, because that's where other, there are no like sacred cows. Ask me whatever you want. Before we do, I, there's a question I'm kind of burning to ask you. Um, and so I, I ask usually my guests, you know, share a tip on productivity because that's a lot of people want to become more productive, more balanced. You go to Marcus's football games. You and Michelle go on dates. You have multiple businesses and you're acting. Um, your, um, your, your doctor is back from sabbatical on the bay. So you've got all this going on. What advice would you give, um, as a man speaking to anyone listening about how you manage to achieve work-life balance, given everything you've got going on. Yeah. Well, you know, um, well, Susan, you got me there. Um, what I, first and foremost, if I'm talking to the men out there, um, that are grinding and, doing what they were called to do and thinking that we're called to provide for our family and we're working 90 million hours a week and basically killing ourselves and not getting to see or be part of the people that we're working so hard for, I would say it's not about the grinding. It's about becoming more efficient because in this year alone, and you know, you've heard me say it, Susan, and I'm forever grateful to you, you know, because of Infusionsoft. I mean, to me, it's a one word answer. It's Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft was a game changer for me. It, it allowed me to be more focused on my time. It allowed me to be more organized. It allowed me to you know, I'll, you know, have better follow up and nurturing and all of that with my business. Um, and, you know, most importantly, it, um, it saved my marriage, you know, I mean, honestly, I used to, I used to, the biggest thing I used to think of prior to meeting you, um, was I just honestly used to, it's not even a dream. It's a nightmare. I used to dream about, um, when my daughter would finally graduate, that, that would be the day that I would get divorced because I knew my wife was just there because of um, the kids. But now it's like, I mean, we actually started date nights, you know, when we started the infusions often. And, and it's been such a change in our relationship. And then just stuff started happening with my family, um, just speaking to the men, you know, out there and the women, too, because I know there's women that grind just as hard, if not harder. But I'm, what I'm just saying to you guys, when I get up on the football field and I look around and my son's on a team of 70 plus athletes and you're the only dad on the field every day. Wow. 
A, I'm very grateful, and B, I've become very passionate to let others know that, you know what, you need to find a system to get organized, get focused, and get more efficient with your time. Otherwise, you're just going to grind, and then when you do all this grinding, you're going to wake up, and it's, there's going to be nobody there, dude. Mm. And there's going to be nobody there, and it's going to be work for what? Yeah. For what? Yeah. You know, look at you. You do it. I mean... And it's, let's get real. It's not easy. Sold out Sunday. Like I literally, you know, um, you know, doing this event in, in New Jersey, get on the plane, um, you know, by the grace of God and a lot of hard work, Chris was able to come with me. So we ended up having a little date at the airport and then, you know, get on the plane, get home settled after midnight the next day. I, and I turn my phone off. I turn my phone off from Saturday night until Monday morning and I don't look and you know I turned it on Monday morning it's like all these texts and everything but Sunday is our time you know Chris and I go for a long run we go to church with our family um you know yesterday I was making homemade chili a vegan version a turkey version um cornbread skillet cornbread I made a um cheddar jalapeno one and then I made a vegan jalapeno cheese one you know and it's that's our Sunday but in order for me to do what I do, I need that day. And I, and I will stand on my soapbox and preach it because, you know, it's so true. And I love what I've seen with you and Michelle, because there is such a massive calling on your life that, that you're living it. And it's not easy, but that's why we have tools, you know, that help us to do things and sell and follow up and do everything when we're on our date nights, when we're at our kids' games, when we're taking Sunday off, when we're doing all those things. I love it. All right. Now, it's time for truth of truth. So the first question goes to you. Now, keep in mind, I don't know what any of the guests are going to ask. Um, I have been asked everything under the sun. Um, in fact, one show I didn't air because of what the guest asked me. It was just so against my values that I wouldn't air the show. Um, just so everyone knows. Um, and uh, so I didn't air the show. I just didn't. But um, I know Rial would not ask a question like that. Um, but uh, anyway, so that being said, any any question you want to ask, um, go for it. <laughs> All right. So when when you were when you were a little a little little girl, what was the what was the what did you dream of being? What were you dream of being when you were a little girl? What did you want? I wanted to be. A fashion designer. And so I, um, I, my parents divorced when I was really, um, young, my mom kidnapped me and it was the early seventies. And so my dad didn't get custody, but he fought for a long time to do it. Eventually my dad got custody and he and my grandmother ran this restaurant. And so this is long before we had emails and websites and things. And he had a, uh, a vendor and the vendor's name was Henderson Printing. And so my dad used to take me when he'd go pick up the printed menus and stuff to Mr. Henderson's printing factory. And they had um, Mr. Henderson rail would let me have all of the pieces of paper, like all of the, the cut up like extras, right? And think every color, there was blue paper and pink paper and white paper. And what I used to do is I would take that paper, I'd go home and I'd design whole fabric fashion collections, like everything, um, you know, from the, the, you know, what, you know, from designer gowns to everyday wear to, you know, business casual, that kind of thing. And then I would go and I'd buy the like Vogue magazine. I'd save up all my money. And I remember I was this fat ethnic kid, in a small town and I got bullied. I got called every word under the sun. I got called the N word. I was beaten up. And imagine this fat ethnic girl with buck teeth. I went to Zeller's one day and you, you'd have to be Canadian to know what Zeller's is, but I go to Zeller's and, and Rael knows what Zeller's is. So I go to Zeller's and I go to buy the fall Vogue, which is like, you know, if you've never purchased a fall Vogue, the thing is like, the Encyclopedia Britannica is massive. And the, the cashier looks at me and goes, why would someone like you buy a magazine like this? Mm. And it hurt. You know, and, and again, uh, you know, we talked about this. Our words have power. And um, I took that magazine home and I gave up all of my drawing of fashion. 
Um, so that was, you know, that was that, but, um, it's amazing how we let people steal our dreams. So I do still have a secret dream to do like a capsule collection of some sort. I love fashion. I love to, um, you know, go mix like a pair of American Eagle jeans with a vintage Chanel jacket and some combat boots or something like I still yes, love it. Yes, the Doc Martens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so that would be, that was, that was the dream for sure. So, okay. I want to ask you, um, if you could work with any actor living or dead, who would it be? Jack Nicholson. Okay. Why? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, he, he was the reason I actually became an actor when I decided to become an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, uh. He, to me, is, I, 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 you know, starting with The Shining and, you know, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, actually, I think was my first movie I ever saw. I just think he's he's phenomenal. And he's, I actually met him. And um, it was pretty cool. It was the first big movie I did. And um, they were having a, a party at Carrie Fisher's house. I, I did this movie called um, Postcards from the Edge. Mm, that was every, a great movie. Thank you. And uh, every I, well, I, I was in it, but I wasn't in it thanks to Shirley MacLaine. But <laughs> but no, because she didn't. She had a vision that was not a, the vision that everybody saw. The first couple of weeks, we had to shoot all over again, mm-hmm. and then so I I, I I I think I got cut out, but uh, still. But anyways, they had this huge party, and everybody who was anybody in Hollywood was there. It was crazy, and uh, we were sitting down. We were getting some food, and. Um, I sit down and I hear this voice go, you mind if I sit next to you? And I go, whoa. I look up and it was Jack Nicholson. I about, I about lost it. Dude. It, was, it was the only time in my life I couldn't speak. I was like, like I was like a little kid. I was like, you know, how, and it was like, and we just sat there and we talked and he talked about his Lakers. Uh, sorry, my dog's barking in the background. Okay. Um, you know, cause you know, Jack loves the Lakers, but, um, that that to me would be to to work with him would be the ultimate. That would be the ultimate, you know. And absolutely with him, yeah. That would be Jack Nicholson for sure. Mm, I love that. Did you did you get to talk to Carrie Fisher that night? Oh yeah, Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher. All she wanted to talk about was my chest. <laughs> I can see that when I met Carrie, we were doing a show in Australia and, um, she's just like pint size. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, she's like, what's your relationship like with your mother? And, you know, and she's like, you know, Susan, you've got to heal that relationship. And, and I will never, ever, ever forget that. Um, it's just an incredible woman anyway. Yeah. yeah she was phenomenal. She was a very powerful woman. And, uh, yeah, I could see how she could have that heart. She she's like has that mother quality to her. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, always kidding around, but she definitely has that mother quality. Um, but uh, you know, that was quite an experience working on that film. The cast, Meryl Streep. Oh my gosh, talk mm-hmm. about talk talk about a perfect. You know, because I heard you talk about this the other day. There's there's method actors, and there's um, uh, like you know, Jack Nicholson is a method actor. Mm-hmm. And Marilyn Street is more of she's a technical actor. I mean, like technically like brilliant. You know, but you know, you, you take Robin Williams, oh my gosh. Robin Williams, now there would be somebody I would love to look at. Robin Williams. You want to talk about a talent? Wow. Wow, what a talent that he was and will always be. But you know, to talk about a method actor, there's not too many comedians. They can go all genres like he did. Mm-hmm. You know, they're either, you know, it's kind of like you when you're an actor, you're traditionally, well, now you need to be more versatile. But back in the day when I was coming up, you were either a TV actor, you're either a big screen actor, you either did sitcoms, you either did drama, you know, you either did episodical. They didn't really, but now you, it's so competitive, you got to do whatever you can. But traditionally, you know, comedians are comedians and you know, mm-hmm. dramatic actors are dramatic actors, but, you know, Robin Williams was all of it. 
Yeah. What a loss. And it, it breaks my heart to think that there are so many people out there that have allowed themselves to believe the lie that they have no value. That'll have to be another show. I, you know, real, I can't thank you enough for being here and I'm excited to see you for sales Nirvana. I'm excited, um, to, you know, to, to watch you in your element. I mean, how many people get to learn Facebook video skills or any video skills, whether you're doing a, a video for your website or whatever you're doing from an Emmy award winning actor, it just doesn't happen. So you can, um, come and work with real and I at sales and, uh, which is going to be amazing. And again, if this episode has been great, real and I would love a five-star review on iTunes, of course, share it with everyone. And if you have an idea, for an episode, you can go to susanslide.com and we do have a comment and a chat bot. You can put it in there. Um, if there's something that you would love to ask me from time to time, I do a whole episode based on fan questions. So you can come and check that out. But again, Rael, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Susan. I appreciate you. I love you. And uh, I'm excited. I will see you soon in Phoenix. I love you too. And give my love to Michelle. It was great to have you. And with that, God bless everyone. Go out there and rock your day. And I look forward to being with you on a future episode. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another epic episode of the Susan Slot Project. For more tips, strategies, and ideas, visit www.susansly.com.